we cannot expect the earth to produce more. We have to do more with what the earth already produces. Welcome neighbors to Hometown Earth, the podcast that brings a down to earth approach to all of your sustainability questions. I'm your host, Lena Sanford, here on the Believe Podcast Network, the number one podcast network for professionals. Here, we believe that everyone can change the world. Do you believe? I'm a Midwest gal with big dreams to discover what it takes to reduce my impact on this beautiful place we call Hometown Earth. Join me every Tuesday as we navigate what actions we can take, big or small, to make a positive impact in your life and the lives of your neighbors on Hometown Earth. Hello, neighbors. When you read this episode title, I'm going to guess that your mind, like many of us, went to magic mushrooms or mushrooms used as psychedelics. And even though I will briefly talk about the use of psychedelic mushrooms as a form of therapy, I hope you will learn that mushrooms are much more than that in this episode. They are part of a network of fungi essential to our world and highly underrated and misunderstood at that. There are millions of different species of fungi and they play a crucial part in our ecology. They solve many problems ranging from ecological destruction to PTSD. What I go over today is in no way a full review of the wonders of mushrooms and their place in this world. In fact, consider this your crash course on mushrooms. In this episode, we will briefly learn about the magic of the different uses of fungi, specifically mushrooms, for food, medicine, organic pesticides, bioremediation, and even promoting equitable economic growth worldwide. Mushrooms have a long history. Cultivated as early as 600 AD in China, but industrialized agriculturally only since the 20th century. They are macro fungi and are the fruiting body produced by the fungi mycelium. Think of it as the mycelium being an enormous underground upside down apple tree, and the mushrooms are the apples that we see springing up from the ground as a result. It's important to talk about mycelium first because it is the underbelly of our world. Mycelium is referred to as Earth's natural internet by world-renowned microbiologist and mycologist Paul Stamets. It is a complex communication network that connects all life on this planet. In fact, the largest known living organism on Earth is a fungus, mycelium, which is estimated to be around 2,400 years old and spreads over 3.4 square miles in Mailer National Forest, Oregon. They colonize and allow plants and trees to communicate and share nutrients. Smaller seedlings that don't get enough sun to photosynthesize can get nutrients from more giant trees. Trees in harm from chemicals, pests, and even deforestation can communicate with each other for miles away to better protect themselves, making mycelium essential for protecting biodiversity. Another massive benefit to networking in the soil is that mycelium contributes to soil carbon sequestration through its pathways, which can also help to alleviate climate change. And if that wasn't enough, mycelium and mushrooms play another huge role in our ecosystem, decomposing the organic materials of our world, allowing new life to grow through nutrient cycling. Without it, our forests and beyond would begin to pile up into mountains of dead organic matter, creating quite the post-apocalyptic scene. Plain and simple, mushrooms and the network of fungi that support them are critical to our planet's sustainability and survival. They have lived much longer than any of us and will continue to be here even if we are not. In terms of food and nutrition, the edible varieties of mushrooms are superfoods. It is no secret that they provide ample vitamins and nutrients and are a delicacy in many of their varieties. They are a great source of fiber and protein. They can provide B vitamins, potassium, copper, and more. 
Mushrooms are antioxidants, shown to be prebiotics, promoting a healthy gut, and mushrooms cultivated in light are a good source of vitamin D. Mushrooms are unique because one can find them in every part of the world, from rural to more industrial areas, and they can be grown quickly in the dark or light and very efficiently, taking up less space than many traditional agricultural products. This is important because of world food shortages, especially in developing countries. The need for nutritious food for everyone on this planet is becoming vital in the conversation for food security, and mushrooms can help fill that void. Growing mushrooms is easy if you know what you're doing, but it is labor-intensive. Thankfully, the mushroom industry is growing. It is a multi-billion dollar industry, allowing for more job opportunities in all parts of the world. One study shows that mushroom cultivation could be used in Bangladesh to alleviate poverty and improve the lifestyle of Bangladesh's most vulnerable. Mushrooms can also be grown in small batches domestically, making it accessible for more people to grow and meet their nutritional needs at home. In other words, mushrooms can be a great sustainable source of income and household nutrition for communities worldwide. Mushrooms are a functional food as well. Beyond their antioxidant and immune-boosting properties, mushrooms have proven to have many medical applications through science and through cultural use throughout time. Today, you can find medicinal mushrooms in beauty products, pills, and even your morning coffee. Studies show that extracts from mushrooms display antibacterial, antiviral, anti-inflammatory effects, protect our livers from disease, and prevent atheromas, reducing heart attacks and strokes. Lion's mane mushroom increases brain tissue regeneration and improves the mental capacities of those with dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Reishi mushrooms, the king of traditional Chinese medicine, not only increases immune health, it holds anti-tumor properties and improves heart health. There is even a rare mushroom, agaricon, that was used in ancient Greece to treat TB and indigenous peoples to treat smallpox, benefits that mycologist Paul Stamets and other researchers have verified. Mushrooms can also be medicine for the mind. Classic psychedelic compounds like psilocybin or magic mushrooms have been used in religious ceremonies and indigenous societies in South and Central America for centuries. They became stigmatized in the 1960s and 70s, and it was only recently that they entered back into the eye of modern science. In 2004, researchers began clinical trials on psilocybin to treat pain, anxiety, and depression in patients with advanced stage cancer. And in September 2020, the Johns Hopkins University built the Center for Psychedelic and Consciousness Research. Currently, psilocybin is being used in studies to treat anxiety disorders such as PTSD, OCD, and depression, as well as drug and alcohol addiction, with long-term subjective effects such as increased altruism, pro-environmental behavior, and connectedness to nature observed. Just a reminder, this is not medical advice, so consult your doctor before incorporating mushrooms into your routine and never eat a mushroom that you aren't 100% sure what it is. But moving on, another magical property of mushrooms is how they contribute to a circular economy. Current agricultural practices leave behind mass amounts of residue, and billions of tons of sawdust, wood chips, coffee pulps, spent coffee grounds, cottonseed holes, textile cotton waste, and cereal straw around the world are discarded as waste. Typically, this waste is burned or thrown into a landfill, polluting our environment. However, this type of waste is the perfect bed for edible and medicinal mushrooms to grow. Oxford reports that they biosynthesize their own food from agricultural crop residues, which, just like solar energy, is readily available and sustainable. So it creates something beneficial instead of adding harm to us and the planet. That spent mushroom substrate, or SMS, 
creates a secondary disposal challenge. But again, mushrooms' versatility comes to the rescue. This SMS can be used as biogas, a renewable energy source that we can use for fuel, reducing our need for fossil fuels. And we can even take it one step further because that residue created from the production of this biogas can be used again on our food crops as organic fertilizer. But wait, there's more. This SMS can also be used as compost as a substrate for other mushroom-forming fungi, as animal feed to promote the health of animals, and to produce packaging and even construction materials. A quote from Oxford reads, We cannot expect the earth to produce more. We have to do more with what the earth already produces. So from our crop waste, mushrooms create more food and medicine than biogas, than fertilizer, and more, which helps us use fewer resources and live more sustainably. And you may wonder about the fact that we spray our crops with pesticides. Still, studies show that this organic soil amendment can enhance the sustainable recycling of this pesticide residue, increasing its soil quality. But there is a potential solution to our crops' harmful pesticides found in fungi as well. Fungi can also be used as an organic pesticide. Again, our hero, Paul Stamets, discovered that you could use certain types of fungi as a way to safely and permanently treat over 200,000 species of insects, including ones that damage crops. This fungus attracts insects, which they then eat and turn into fungi literally from the inside out. But before it dies, it takes spores back to its nest, effectively killing the rest of insects without using chemicals that contaminate our soil and water. Once fully developed and released, this could revolutionize our pesticide use. And information from Stamets on this mycopesticide tells us that this fungus can be trained through natural selection to be species-specific in its targeting so that this fungus does not harm other non-targeted insects, making it non-harmful to bees and other pollinator insects. Paul's philosophy is that we do not wage war against insects. We just want to protect our homes, crops, or bees without causing collateral harm to the ecosystem. But what about the ecosystem that we've already damaged? Due to industrialization and the use of toxic chemicals and pesticides, we face substantial environmental problems, such as the contamination of our soil, water, and air. I mentioned earlier that fungi are among nature's most powerful decomposers. Fungi is crucial in mycoremediation, a form of bioremediation that uses fungi instead of bacteria to break down toxic waste and pollutants in an efficient, economical, eco-friendly way. Mycelium fungi can eradicate pollutants from our environment unless the chemicals prove toxic to the fungus. Through macroremediation, we can treat persistent and harmful contaminants from our air, soil, and water. Pollutants like polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAH, one of the major pollutants released in the environment through coal, wood, and petroleum use, antibiotics, herbicides, insecticides, antifungal drugs, detergents, heavy metals, and even plastics. Research at the Department of Botany tells us that white rot fungi are increasingly being investigated and used in bioremediation because of their ability to degrade an extremely diverse range of persistent or toxic environmental pollutions, including those PAHs occurring in coal tar and crude oil. Work by Stamets shows that oyster mushroom mycelium can produce on oil-contaminated soil, and it is tolerant to saltwater exposure, making it a potential option for oil spill cleanups. This type of mushroom can also eat plastic. Along with the oyster mushroom, students at Yale found another plastic-eating mushroom in the Amazon rainforest. This variety, however, can survive on plastic alone without light or air. So after hearing all of that, why isn't everyone adopting the magic of mushrooms? For one, there is a lot of stigma that surrounds mushrooms and fungi. 
Secondly, there is little funding or investment in the research for mycology, putting citizen scientists at the forefront of making these discoveries. And even though there are over 14,000 known species of mushrooms and millions of species of fungi, they are still largely unexplored. Furthermore, we will not determine their potential benefits for our society and our environment if they are extinct before we even discover them. Human activities such as deforestation and human-induced climate change negatively affect the mushroom population, leading to loss of biodiversity, decelerated rate of nutrient recycling that is critical for our ecosystem function, and depleted potential habitats. We need to preserve our land, feed our world, and use more innovative, eco-friendly methods to sustain ourselves on this planet. And I believe mushrooms are the way. The multi-beneficial properties of mushrooms shouldn't be gatekept as a luxury for the few, but a necessity for all people on this planet. To help make this a reality, you can learn more about fungi and mushrooms and spread the word. For this week's Something to Grow On, I encourage you to expand your knowledge. Follow up on this podcast by watching the documentary Fantastic Fungi or catch up on Paul Samet's TED Talk on the six ways mushrooms can save the world, both of which I will link in the episode show notes. Then I encourage you to get out in nature if you can. Take your phone and use a Mushroom ID app or go old school if you can find a Mushroom Identification book and see what mushrooms you can find around you. The best way we can connect with nature is to be in it. And finally, tell a friend, tell your family, tell literally anyone who will listen about fungi and mushrooms. We have to break this stigma. I'll leave you with a quote from the work of Chang and Miles on mycelium. Without leaves, without buds, without flowers, yet they form fruit. As a food, as a tonic, as a medicine, the entire creation is precious. And precious it is. Until next time, thanks for joining me, neighbor. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hometown Earth as much as I did. Let us know by rating and subscribing so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every week on Tuesday. Head to the show notes linked in the episode description for more details. And let us know in the comments what you want to hear next. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Believe.com and at Believe Podcasts. And you can find more about the podcast on Instagram at Hometown Earth or connect with me personally at Lena Saintford. We all know change needs to happen. So let's get started right here at Hometown Earth.